Hi, I'm mailing about with Nicholas Jarecki. He is the writer and director of Crisis. Hi there. Hello, Robin. How are you? Good. So what do you think of my uh, my backdrop? You know, it looks oddly familiar to me. Um, and it's actually bringing back kind of traumatic memories of how cold it was that day we were shooting there, minus 25 Celsius. Oh, my God. So how did you cope? Uh, you know, you got to, we actually it was so cold. We shot this movie on 35 millimeter film and we were using these old Panavision lenses from the 1968, they froze. And we had the glass frozen. We had to have these heaters, you know, to get this kind of Bond style action opening. Uh, and we would have guys coming over and putting the lens under a heat warmer. And meanwhile, then I would take my foot and put it under the warmer as well. Um, so a uh, boy, that was cold. So everybody jumped into like a hot tub after they were finished filming. Was that what was going on? Uh, we didn't have that Weinstein quality to it quite, uh, but I think I drank a lot of coffee. <laughs> now, Nicholas, I imagine that you did a very deep dive into the opioid crisis. So can you tell me a little bit about that? Uh, yeah, well, um, so, uh, you know, this film began uh, from, from personal uh, experience where I had some friends who went down the wrong path with opioids and uh, some are not around anymore. Um, and I think this is a common story uh, that, you know, everybody knows someone that struggled with addiction, but it was so confusing to understand how did this happen and why was it growing so much? You know, I first experienced this 10 or 15 years ago, but in the last five or 10 years, we've seen this explosion of people having opioid problems. Well, what happened exactly? People didn't just wake up and decide, hey, I'd like to hurt myself with opioids. So I think, you know, I always like to follow the money. And I started getting together with these reporters at the LA Times who'd been looking into the behavior of pharmaceutical companies, the FDA, um, who knew what and where, where, and then smugglers and illicit traffickers, which we explore in the film. Uh, and what are the economic incentives that drive this behavior? So I thought, isn't this the great material for a thriller you know, in the style of Michael Clayton or 21 grams traffic, you know, and we could look at this issue from many different sides. So we have Gary Oldman um, as a professor researcher dealing with the pharmaceutical companies up on Mount Olympus. Um, we have the police storyline and investigation when it comes to the traffickers, you know, in Montreal, pulling stuff right across this border into America, an unpatrolled border, unlike Mexico. Uh, and, uh, and then we have how is it personally affecting people who are unlucky enough to get exposed to the drug and addicted to it. Evangeline Lilly's character, really wonderful in her performance there. Um, as well but, as uh, Johnny Depp's kid, Lily Rose. Lily Depp, who plays um, uh, the, the sister of, uh, of Jake, um, was a, a wonderful young actor I knew from, uh, from Los Angeles. And I asked her to come as I did, you know, many people like Greg Kinnear is an old friend or Michelle Rodriguez come in and lend their talents to the film. Um, Lily really uh, had no, a good friend of hers that had addiction issues. And so she studied uh, very deeply with that friend and, and tried to create a round character. Um, and I think they did a tremendous job. Yeah, I always get so upset when I see an actor making believe that they're shooting a needle into their arm. So, so talk about directing those kinds of scenes. Well, it, you know, it was quite fascinating. I have the footage somewhere behind the scenes, but we were shooting this. I, I wrote that while we were filming, actually. I didn't have a, a scene where Lily was uh, using drugs in that way. Um, but, you know, we thought it was very fitting for her character. And so we're shooting it and we're shooting this very intense scene where she's using drugs, she's cooking up heroin. And then in between takes, you know, she'd be laughing and we'd be, you know, uh, looking at something on Instagram. I mean, it's amazing when you see an actor who has the ability to move between those spaces so quickly. Um, it, it, it's a great talent um, to be able to, to enter that emotional depth. Um, and, and, and so, uh, you know, we try to keep it light when we're making the film because we're dealing with some heavy topics you know, you can't live there all the time. We try to do that in the film as well. I don't want to scare people off. It's not all doom and gloom in this movie. There's a lot of heroism and a lot of action. Um, oh, yeah. So so how else did you sort of lighten things up? Like what other behind the scenes fun did you have? Well, we did a bunch of opioids. No, um, uh, <laughs> we... Um, you know, well, look, we're, we're very dedicated, right? So we're always running around trying to get as much as we can get. So there's a, a kind of excitement and a challenge in that where we do 
15, 20, 25 camera setups a day. We've got drones here. We're going on the helicopter. We're going, you know, so we, we do a lot cinematically, but then we kind of, you know, zero in and try to get these very emotional moments. You know, as you see, a lot of the film is about faces. We're, we're a lot of close ups. Um, we shoot in 35 millimeter really to, to bring out the, uh, that, that emotional depth, which I think film does in a way that digital isn't quite doing yet. Um, so I guess there's, um, we, we just try to pace ourselves uh, and some days are very exciting, then some days are very uh, emotional. Um, yeah. And uh, I guess like life. Absolutely. So at the end of this, there are some sobering uh, details that you give us. So um, tell, tell us about that. Well, I think the uh, opioid epidemic, you know, it was on the front page every day when I started making the film. Uh, it's off the front page now because of COVID and, and other things that have been happening that are, you know, equally disturbing, but it hasn't gone away. Um, so we have, you know, tens of thousands of Americans dying every year worldwide. Um, this is a big problem. And I think the key is um, understanding where these issues come from, uh, looking at the, the manufacturers, making sure the safeguards are in place for them to uh, you know, behave as responsible corporate citizens um, and, and, and looking at treatment for people who get in trouble. I think there's been a lot of progress in America. We used to demonize the addict and say, oh, that only happens to people on the fringes of society. But I think now everybody knows someone who's been in trouble with substances and understand that there has to be a treatment based approach um, and that there is hope. Uh, so, you know, I think there's hope in this film and you see these characters fighting the system, standing up for their principles. And uh, they go to some dark places, but I think, uh, you know, by the end, um, there is redemption and there is uh, opportunity for a positive future. Absolutely. So what would you love audiences to come away with? Do you kind of see this as a cautionary tale, Nicholas? Well, you know, look, I, 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 I really like the films. You know, you see those movies that are, you know, up for awards or whatever. You go, oh, my God, it feels like I got to eat my vegetables to watch this movie. You know, I don't like that. I like movies that are gripping and thrilling and take you on a journey. And, and first they're an entertainment. They reach you on that level. They get you wrapped up in something. Um, but I think then that opens you up to say, you know, oh, here's a topic I didn't quite know about, or I, I had a different understanding or impression of it, or, you know, it's totally new to me. Um, and then does it make you think? Uh, so I think in, in the case here, we got to think about what is our responsibility to each other in society? How, how do we make medications that are safe and effective? Um, and how do we help our, our brother or sister who's fallen, um, you know, get them into a, a path where there is hope for the future? So I would say hope would be the thing to take away from this, uh, that principles are worth fighting for, and that it's up to all of us to take our own part uh, in, in, in more understanding and more uh, activism uh, to make a better future. Absolutely. Nicholas, thank you so much for joining me and have a happy and safe stay for the rest of the year, if you can. <laughs> thank you. And I hope you'll get your warm up. You don't have to get into a hot tub, but, you know, get out of that cold. It's very cold there. I know it's snowing in New York as we speak. <laughs> Take care. Bye, Robin. Thank bye you. Bye bye. Okay. What do you think we're here to do? To make a difference? We can touch you anywhere in the world. We're running out of time. Last chance. Always news. Always refreshing. Always candid. Always billing about. Robin Milling delivers what celebrities are saying to you. To you. To you.